Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk Show. I'm getting more confident saying that every time, even though it's a name that's probably going to change next week. Again, if you've got any better names than the Wrestle Talk Show, please comment them down below. Uh, at the moment, the Google Drive folder that we work off of is just called the Luke and Ollie Show. Because we're so... I, I, I don't know, as soon as you send that across to me, I was like, oh, is that really what we're calling it? I hope not. I I don't know, because I named that folder. Yeah, I Why didn't I call it the Ollie and Luke Show? <laughs> because I think we decided previously that as a double act, I am Ant, you are Deck. I am Adam, you are Joe. I don't know if any of those references will travel <laughs> across the majority of viewers in the United States. Sorry about that. Yeah, they... They've got an interesting trick, Ant and Deck, they're British TV presenters. Very well very well regarded British TV presenters. They're, they're national treasures. I'll go out of my way to watch anything they're on. They are so beloved that Nicolas Cage would go out of his way to hunt them down. It's a national treasure joke. Oh, that's a good joke. Uh, thanks, That's man. a good reference. Thanks. Oh, I've lost my place. <laughs> I don't know what I'm let's, talking let's about. Let's skip Should over. Should we just go straight uh, yeah. into some chat? I didn't think I would ever give a three hour show uh, the highest five out of five rating but this week's Postmania episode of Raw was so good it got an this is a hard word to say with all the, the syllables in awe that's, the, that's my five out of five rating for Raw uh, hilarious because it rhymes with the word Raw mm-hmm. although I think I might rename it because someone tweeted in I, I'm sorry I can't remember your name I, I will credit you when I eventually <laughs> steal it though Rawsome yeah, I thought that today as well. Actually, I don't know why that why you didn't use that. Rawsome. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so, so yeah, smack. Uh, but SmackDown, although pretty good, mm. wasn't as good as Raw. I yeah. don't think, in my opinion, it was funny because I was watching SmackDown this morning, and it, it felt to me that um, yeah, it just felt like fatigue had set in. Like the, a lot of wrestling over the, the people weekend. that were there for SmackDown were most likely people that were also there for the Hall of Fame and Access and Takeover and WrestleMania and then Raw. You get the travel packages, with yeah, it all uh, included. And like, just you then showing up to SmackDown, I was like, oh, good lord! I mean, it's exciting that we're getting get some debuts and stuff, and it's the first live SmackDown after WrestleMania. But I am tired, and I've watched a lot of wrestling, and the crowd were not as vibrant as they were for Raw last uh, for Raw on Monday. They it was, were in it was, parts. It was so. It, but Nakamura yeah, and Ty. Nak- yeah, but that was it. Everything yeah. else they were completely dead for. Well, I think that's because the show wasn't of the same quality. It felt like every other SmackDown show, with the exception of some debuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas, whereas Raw felt really strong throughout. You had the. I mean, I got, uh, apart from a few. I would have got rid of the Sami Zayn Jinder Mahal match, obviously. What? And take, the co-main event. And take Jinder off TV. I know, He's right? so good. Coming fresh off his celebrity angle. <laughs> Coming down to the final two in the Andre the Giants Memorial Battle Royal. You should have seen me and my friend just looking like, look at this bunch of geeks left in the ring. It was unreal. There's nothing geeky about Jinder's arms. <laughs> um, it's like a road map. Yeah, I you can know. trace those veins around. I don't know. He is, he is a wellness violation waiting to happen. He must not have any carbs you know there's that stepbrothers joke where he yeah. goes I haven't had a carb since 2004 <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's gender yeah, yeah. god he's cut <laughs> Raw and Smackdown for the first time I don't know when this last happened it, it's, just, this, Raw beat Smackdown this is the first time I would say that Raw has been better than Smackdown since the since the brand split yeah so the post battleground show which was a really good episode and the Universal Championship win show yeah, where they had the four way. Uh, I think it's yeah, but I think there's things like that. The uh, week like, after summer, like things like that. I think just throw things in Raw's favor, just like because it's a title match and that's exciting because you're crowning a new champion. Like automatically, that's going to be a more exciting yeah. show than the one who's not going to be crowning a new champion. But it wasn't just no, no, no. I disagree with that because it wasn't just the crowning of the champion. It was Kevin Owens being that champion, and it was Triple H turning, coming back, and turning on Seth Rollins. Little did we know at that point. <laughs> that that wouldn't be paid off for a long, long time. Be forgotten for, about for, for quite some moment, time. For that moment, it was very good. But yeah, overall, Kurt Angle was Raw General Manager. Yep. The announcement of the Superstar Shaker. Mm-hmm. That's kind of sound like a dance. Yep. Uh, revival call-up. That yes. was my personal awesome. favourite thing. So good. Uh, was there another call? Emma's return. Oh, wait, oh no, see, no, I, I 
don't agree that it was a rawsome show or an in or show. I'd have put it at the core level. Four out of five. Yes, I thought it was a decent show. I thought it was very good, but there were a lot of things in there that really bugged me, like the the Seth stuff at the end of it, uh, which which, yeah. which bugged me. But like that is that he should. You know, he wasn't medically cleared the night before. Yeah. Why is he wrestling? And why is Finn Balor best buddies with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he put him on the shelf for eight months. But, like, just bring out Emma just because... I, I get what you're saying, that it, just having her there was a fresh face, and that kind of did make the, the, the division seem interesting for a change. I just... All of a sudden, she was like, oh, Emma's back. Is that all we've been build? Is this what we've been building up for? It's like, is this what the... You know, so many weeks of build have just so she could just be part of a six person mm. tag match or a six women tag match where she factored into nothing. Like, it was just a complete waste. I thought, I, I've read this opinion. I, I disagree with it. I, I mean, I know it's a, a long catastrophe of a tease yes, for Emma's yeah. return and re debut and Emmalina and what have you. But when Emma came out, from the moment she stood on the announcer's table, I was like, I know who your character is. The way she was interacting with people. It was like she she was such a heel in that I don't care if I screw over my teammates. I want everything to be about me. I'm an egotistical maniac. Look at me, yada, yada, yada. I, I couldn't take my eyes off her. She just didn't factor into the match. That doesn't and really... I, but I, I think if you're bringing back a character have them mean something like make because all of a sudden mm. now because she's just been a part of a six woman tag match which she really had like no she didn't factor into at all she's now just another body on the roster she's okay. not she's not someone that you could put into a feud with bailey next week no okay and, okay. and, and, and from that point i think it was a complete waste maybe she should have beat up charlotte rather than nia Jax. absolutely uh i theoretically Theoretically, I agree with you. I mean, just the last video, I was talking about how the worst thing in wrestling is a wasted resource. Heat transference, guys! So, theoretically, I agree with you, but in practice, I didn't mind it at all. Sometimes that's the way the mind works, yeah. though. But on SmackDown, we had Shinsuke Nakamura, anti-danger. Yes. So, what would you do with Nakamura now he's on SmackDown, which is where we all wanted him to go. Absolutely. He said in interviews last week that he wanted to go to SmackDown because he was really excited about the prospect of having matches with AJ Styles. Very exciting. Yeah. With John Cena. Oh, I can't wait to see that. I bet that yeah. would be a clash that of styles. Would be. And oh, Randy Orton. Hmm. Mm, a bit bored of that. Yeah. But um, still, like, I, I, I'm so happy that Nakamura is on SmackDown, and I hope. And I pray that AJ does not get moved to Raw next week. I, that's the uh, uh, because I don't. It's going to happen. Isn't I it? loved it. when when AJ came out and he shook uh, Shane's hand and he says, "I don't want to go. I want to stay here." I was like, "Yes, AJ, I want you to stay here as well. I want you on the blue brand." And then when Nakamura came back, I was like, "Well, when Nakamura debuted, I was like, yes, now I definitely want AJ to be on the blue brand because I want that as my title picture yeah. for the rest of the year." Is Nakamura, AJ, Miz, and uh, Randy and Cena. Like those are your those oh, are your you think, five. You think Miz can hang in there? Absolutely. The heat that that man gets, one hundred percent, absolutely. But like, I love the Miz right now. Okay, like he gets main event, he gets main event heat. But so did the Honky Tonk Man. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, does that make him very, a main event? That's eventer? a very different type of like. Because I think that you can put Cena, like, Cena, you can put Miz into that position. When Miz was in the main event back in 2013 or whatever it was, yeah. or it might have been, no, it was before. It was before then. Was, was before it 2009? Yeah, whenever it was. Yeah, whenever, because whenever... The Rock came back in WrestleMania 28. We're 33 now, been 2012, 2011 time. By the by, though. By the by, that, by. That's that. That's you know. That's not. That's neither here nor there. I do work when, out my life go counting back from WrestleMania's yeah. though. When so when Miz was like the number one heel, whenever you looked at him, he's like he doesn't belong here. Yeah, he does not belong in this position. Whereas now, especially just coming up a feud with John Cena, I look at him now and I'm like, yeah, mate, I think you can hang with the. I think you can hang with with top level guys. And if you were in the main events, especially in the network days where it doesn't matter really mm. who's in the main event, I would say that yeah, I think he could be in the main event and have a pretty solid match he's a uh, you know he's a fairly decent worker he is the king of soft style king but, of soft style yeah. but that's why I love the fact that his first feud is with the king of strong style that because is a really good point it is the king of strong style versus the king of soft style it's going to be great okay you've, you've brought it up here so 
it looks like Shinsuke Nakamura's first feud is going to be against The Miz. Yeah. I mean, is that confirmed confirmed, though? Because well, it's not like they had an interaction. No, but... I, Nakamura just came down and did... Yeah, I, I think that if you... Next week, The Miz comes out and be like... Because, like, they kept coming back to Miz during his intro, like, during his entrance, but, and he look, had this look on his face like, who's this guy? Yeah. So next week, you have Miz come out for Miz TV and be like... Who was this guy that ruined my segment last week? And in the middle of it... Have you been watching no. the WWE Network, Miz? <laughs> like, but like, you know, he's like, who is this guy? And in the middle of his ranting, all of a sudden, Shaka, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura's music hits again. Shakamura. Shakamura. And Shinsuke... T-shirt's down again. And Shinsuke just does the entrance again and doesn't <laughs> say anything and then just leaves again. It'd be great. And just co- constantly messing with Miz's segments on TV. And the Miz is just getting more and more frustrated. That yeah, this guy yeah, keeps yeah. ruining his stuff. I think that'd be an amazing feud. And it's a great use of your, of Nakamura as well. Because Miz can do all the promos. It's a good thing for Chris Jericho to do. I don't... I think that's too... For me, that's too comedic for nakamura's first feud i don't think it's comedic because what, i think him it, coming out and just playing with him in that way yeah, exactly I it's, think it's a I, mind game thing i think but it'd be it's, great. A, it's a mind game in jest i i would prefer see the way i would have done it i talked about it in the in the last episode is nakamura when he makes his debut on smackdown heat transference he misses is like is what the hell are you doing and Nakamura just looks at him and kicks his... Actually, no, he shouldn't strike first. Miz should push him first. Nakamura would smile with the, the gum shield and then Miz would push him again. And then Miz goes for him one more time. That's when Shinsuke does a, a crazy thing and ends up in a Kinshasa. Yeah. And Maurice is like... <laughs> and and that's how you do it. You, you have him get physical. I, I would build it with with... Nakamura effectively having squash matches on people, so he's winning. Like Ty Dillinger had a very good squash match, I thought, with Kurt Hawkins. Yep. Really showcased Ty. And get Nakamura over that way, but occasionally Miz interferes. I wouldn't like to do it. But of course, Miz can do the talking. He can turn up on Talking Smack and yeah. stir up a storm. I, I really missed uh, Miz on Talking Smack this week. I thought he could have had... Because then he had Ty Dillinger and uh, Naomi on there. Then yeah. he could have had Miz bursting in and cutting a promo on Nakamura. I think that would have been great. That'd yeah, be that would have been a really good spot. Well, there was, it was a very sleepy episode of uh, mm. Talking Smack this week. Anyway, Shane was... like He was so tired. Barely, no Brian. Barely said a word. Like, yeah. <laughs> barely, like, they'd be like, what's it with the Superstar Shakedown? What's going on? He'd be like... Negotiations have started. Uh, any um, anyone's applicable. Um, <laughs> so funny. Uh, me, I'm a champion. I'm Naomi. Will I go? Uh, yeah, I yeah. I, I don't know. I don't like, know. I don't know. Like, I Probably. don't know. Maybe anyone can go. I think that's what yeah. my dad told me. <laughs> so after, the, so uh, it looks like it's going to be a Miz feud for hopefully a short feud, just a month, and then. So this is how I would do it. Mm-hmm. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. I was going to interrupt uh, you. So you don't, <laughs> don't, don't apologize. The, the Miz. They they have a short feud and then what's the first is it backlash backlash is SmackDown <laughs> because payback is raw. It's not backlash though. Backlash was the one we've just had. No, yeah, with Elimination Chamber. We just had WrestleMania. No, it was Elimination Chamber before that, wasn't it? Yeah. And Roadblock, end of the that line. That was Raw. And then before that I think is it, it was backlash? TLC. No, we had yeah. Backlash in October. Are you sure? Yeah, we definitely already had oh, a smash. Because all the comments last when we did these videos last week, every pay per view that wasn't WrestleMania, we just called Backlash. Because Backlash makes sense after WrestleMania. That's because you could tell the era that we grew up in with no wrestling. Mercy. Exactly. Yeah, because we and I, you and I grew up at the time when Backlash was your pay per view after WrestleMania. It's called Backlash for the purpose of this video. Insert the real one. Uh, we're overdub it. Yeah. Denver Broncos. <laughs> I would have that that run until whatever the next pay-per-view is, but let's be honest, it's backlash. <laughs> and then you put Nakamura right in the title picture, probably Nakamura against the heel Randy Orton. Yes. One of those dream matches that well, we Nakamura baby, wants to have. You could do it babyface Randy Orton. It would work the same way. I like heel versus face dynamics. Yeah, no, I too, but yeah. I, I don't think it's it's not the right time to turn Randy heel. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of people online kind of complaining that, that Miz is Nakamura's first feud with some people saying, like, oh, is this a rib? Like, this has got to be a rib, mm. right? When actually it's the perfect feud for him to go into. Like, don't put him straight into the title picture, just put him against a, a heel that no one likes and he can just have, like, some really fun matches with him. It is the king of strong style versus the king of soft style. And then hopefully... By SummerSlam time, AJ Styles. 
That is, of course, if AJ Styles is still on SmackDown as of SummerSlam time. So, it's the Superstar Shake-Up. It's the Superstar it's Shake-Up. The Superstar Shake-Up. It's an annual tradition, the Superstar Shake-Up. Oh, Everyone's uh, going to be saying it in a few years' time. Like There'll be years down the line where we'll go like, do you remember the Superstar Shake-Up of 2017? Yeah. Oh, that was a good one. So, if you've... We've been asking you to come up with better names for this show. Come up with some better names for the Superstar Shake-Up. Comment them below. And, and, and don't we'll talk ju- about them next don't week. Don't just suggest we call this show Superstar Shake-Up. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> not very good for SEO. <laughs> that won't show up in Google very well no. or YouTube searches. So Luke and I here have got five trades. So that involves ten wrestlers because it's between each. Mm-hmm. Right. So... Uh, do you, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Are you going to do all five, or should we do one each? I think we'll do one each. I think that's a good way of yeah, doing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll do the tags first. Yeah. I would trade Enzo and Cass to SmackDown for American Alpha to Raw. Excellent choice. Because you've got Kurt Angle, now the Raw GM on Raw, mm-hmm. because that's the main place you can be the Raw GM yep. on Raw. And... I mean, I don't know how... I wouldn't want him to manage them because he's, of course, the general manager. And that implies he manages everyone. So I don't know. I just like the idea of them being close together. I also like the fact that the Revival are there. So you can yeah, have some, some, some classic American Alpha Revival matches. That yeah. I'm, I'm all for that. Absolutely. I think that's a fairly good trade. I also think American Alpha need to move because... They just mm. It just hasn't worked on SmackDown, Well, it's, it's, it's I don't think it's there the problem. The... The SmackDown Tag Team Division, which was the strongest at one point, they had some really, really great teams in there, has just been forgotten about. And they've just completely... What are those great teams, apart from the Usos? And... Oh, well, in American Alpha, and you had uh, Heath Slater and Rhino made themselves into a fairly decent tag unit, and you had Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt at one point. Yeah, I guess so, a decent so tag unit. Then. Like, there, w- there was a period where they had some... And they've got enough ground to build upon as well. Like, you could rebuild the Ascension. And make, like, there was a point, you know, they won matches and everyone was like, oh my God, the Ascension yeah. won and things like that. I really like the Vaud villains. Love the Vaud villains. Yeah. I love Bree Zango. I think yeah, Bree make... Zango could be a good comedy... Uh... A great comedy heel yeah. act. And be... they're both very good wrestlers Absolutely. As well. So, like, there is a, there's a lot in the SmackDown Tag Team Division that you could rebuild and restructure and make a decent tag team division out of. And that would and be great. And I think that American Alpha are a good part of that. Oh, but I want them to come to Raw. I know, but I'm See, not... Enzo, I... Enzo and Big Cass on SmackDown, I would freshen them up because they've got... They're, they're going off the boil as well. Yeah, I know, but I, I'm tra- I'm trading other people. Well, what's your tag team trade? So I would trade the club mm. for Rhino and Heath Slater. Now, I struggled with a tag team to swap them over for because I wanted to try, I wanted to pick a tag team that I... What I didn't want to do was just, like, take a really popular team and then trade them for the Vaud villains and just, like, oh, here's some jobbers. Like, you know... So you did it with Rhino and Slater instead. But I think Rhino and Slater still have some popularity about them. Yeah. That I think that that could still work as a... And I think the club on SmackDown will be a really, really great... Uh, great new faces in there. I, the problem is I don't want to lose American Alpha from the from SmackDown. That, that's the thing. But I'm... Also, I wanted to pick different picks to you. Uh, <laughs> and, so, and you'd already picked American Alpha. Yeah. So, but I'm I'm fully on board with them going to Raw just so I can have more revival matches. Yeah, I just uh, I, I think that's a, the the Raw, well, the one time tag team champ. Oh, I guess Rhino and Slater were as well. Yeah, it's just I I, f- I feel weird about Rhino and Slater because I feel like they've broken up yeah. emotionally. I was done with them. I think they when did they break cut up. that heartbreaking angle on Talking Smack. Yeah, I think they did break up, but then they were back together. But then they were totally fine. It yeah. just shows like for all the positive comments about SmackDown very much deserved a lot of it they have botched their tag division yes something in a big rotten way because something they, rotten they had a lot of talent there mm-hmm. and they had a nice organic thing with rhino and slater as well they handled that perfectly but yeah it didn't work out okay so my next trade is Sami Zayn from raw for the miz on smackdown switch those two over the idea being if daniel bryan's doing a trade he's the general manager of smackdown he hates the miz he wants to get rid of him Let's send him that way. Sami Zayn has been vocal about wanting to go to SmackDown in the past. Mick Ap- apart gone. from on this week's episode where he said, I don't want to go yeah. to SmackDown. I think they're just... Because AJ Styles said the same thing to Shane McMahon. I think they've said to everyone, everyone, just say you want to stay where you are. <laughs> so it looks like it's shocking when we trade you. Because that after Raw that night, there was a 
video on YouTube, WWE's YouTube page. Did you see it? No. It's of Bailey and Sasha Banks. And they say, oh, where do you want to go? And Sasha Banks is like, Raw's my home. (laughs) When everything she's been saying forever is SmackDown. I love Eddie Guerrero. I want to go to SmackDown. Eddie Guerrero, Guerrero, Eddie. So that's my that's my second pick. So Or technically third because Enzo and Cass and Tags counts too. Sorry. Yeah. So I completely get the trading Sammy over because Sammy is lost in the shuffle on Raw. He has no place there. And get him away from Kevin Owens. I don't and, want to oh, see them fight. Yeah, I mean that's the other that's the other positive to take away from is I would love to not have to see that. Amazing how WWE have made me not want to see that match ever again, despite the fact yeah. that it was one of the best organic feuds they've had fight in, in forever. years. <sighs> but anywho. So I get that, and I would, I, I'd rather see them as like uh, a friend of mine. Actually, my cousin messaged me today, and she was saying like, "Oh, I don't know why Sheamus and Cesaro needs to split up because Cesaro needs to be, and he's have a great singles run." And I was like, "If Sheamus and Cesaro split up, Cesaro is getting Sami Zayn. Yeah, he's yeah, just, yeah, he'll get nowhere. So it's actually probably better that they do stay as a tag team. Anyway, I have gone slightly different than you because I don't want to lose the Miz from SmackDown. This is ridiculous. I will and I okay, so I do have a reason for this as well. Okay. And this is going to take some justification. Okay. So, I <laughs> I want to keep the Miz on SmackDown, so I'm not trading him out also I need him for my Shinsuke Nakamura feud. Sure. So, I'm suggesting that you trade Roman Reigns for Apollo Crews. Now, Again, I've said I'm not trying to just like trade stars for jobbers because I prefer SmackDown to Raw. What I was doing there is that you could take over Roman Reigns and get him away from Raw. That also takes him away from Kevin Owens yeah, yeah, and Seth yeah, Rollins yeah. and everything like that. Get him onto SmackDown. That'll be great. And he can just there uh, and be a bit fresher face. Also keeps him away from Brock Lesnar for a year as well. Sure, sure. And with Apollo Crews, what I was looking for within the SmackDown <laughs> roster, don't, don't, like, like, there's no other top talent that I would trade over that wasn't AJ Styles. Okay. So, I was thinking of a diamond in the rough. I was thinking of someone that if you took him over to Raw, and where he could be fresh, and you just instantly make him, like, you know, try and make him into a star and give yeah. him a push. Because Apollo Crews is doing nothing on SmackDown. He is doing, I didn't even think he was in the, the Geek Battle Royal. He wasn't even in. The, no, he wasn't. He wasn't was even he? in the job of Battle Royal. So like that's Poor how guy. much that's how much of a jobber he is. He wasn't. He couldn't even be with the other jobbers. And there were so many people in that match. So many. It's like a forty-person <laughs> match. So you move him over to Raw. You let him rebuild himself, and you give him that chance because he has got the talent there. Because Raw's the land of opportunity. More so for Apollo Crews. I don't know. Maybe like maybe I just I think that that's it's a good trade because it gets Roman onto SmackDown, but it also gives someone a chance. To not just be um, topping a main eventer for a main eventer, it gives someone to create a new main eventer. So, how do I mean? Because I, I've I've approached my trades as, you know, I'm Kurt like, Angle you're, and I'm you're Daniel Bryan. Like, for like. like you, yeah, you would you wouldn't accept that trade wouldn't happen because one side would be a lot worse off. Really, unless mm. Kurt Angle's like, I'm a scout. I see some talent in this that's, young boy. That, that's what I'm I thinking. Guess yeah. So, so imagine, and it does make Cruz seem exactly, a bigger deal. Imagine yeah. if Angle had like handpicked him from the SmackDown roster mm. and brought him in and be like, "This is our guy. He's going to be like, you know." That's, that's a really interesting way to do it. Thank you very much. Although I've always said about Apollo Cruz, and I might get some stick for it again. He's billed as six foot, I think, mm. on WWE's website when he's like five five. I reckon. Is he really. He's very short, isn't he? I have no idea. I've never I met think him. I'm. Well, seeing him against other wrestlers, we saw him live at NXT Takeover London. Yeah, but it's far away, and he was again. And he was against Baron Corbin as well, who was yeah. at house. Well, he, to me, I don't know why you can't put him in the cruiserweight division. I think he would look it's really good in that. Too heavy, man. Do you think? Yeah, it's too. It's two o five live. Know, yeah, and he's built he's at like not, two two five. Exactly. I think. But it's it's made up numbers. Oh, of course they're made He's up probably numbers. probably 190. Yeah, no, but I don't look at Apollo Crews and think like, I mean, that guy looks like a cruiserweight. What? I think he's he's not the same size of Neville, is he? No, he's, but a, he's, he's very similar but he's like, size he's to. Ginormous. He's ginormous. Okay, we'll move on from that. My next pick is for the women's division. It's Charlotte for Alexa Bliss. <sighs> now, take li- it, taking Little Miss Bliss. This was a difficult one. Because, I mean, they're both people who have done the championship run in their respective divisions on their respective brands. Charlotte, to me, the way Raw happened, looked like she was done mm-hmm. on that. As as I felt Enzo and Cass were as well. The way she was beaten, she took the pinfall loss in that six-person tag and Nia beat her up afterwards. Yep. It's not like she can feud against Nia. 
I mean, she could, but that would be a very strange dynamic because uh, Nia's hardly a baby-faced monster, <laughs> is she? Um, so, yeah, I thought Charlotte seems to be going that way. Who would Charlotte's best trade be? And I thought Becky Lynch, which might have sport your one. But <laughs> then I was like, who does that leave babyface-wise on SmackDown? So you've got uh, you've got Becky Lynch. So you take away Becky Lynch. You've only got Naomi. Mm. I guess you could ta- turn Natalia back as a face. Uh, yeah, unless but you other people, bring, yeah. Mickey James, Carmella. Uh, yeah, Alexa Mickey James Bliss. is more or less a face now. I guess so. So my my re- but of course, if you send Charlotte over there, yeah, I was gonna. I don't know. The other way, I, I was thinking you could bring Summer Rae up as a baby face because I would also turn Banks heel. Bailey and Summer Rae would be your faces, and then you'd have Banks, Emma, Nia Jax as your heels. I think it's a pretty strong division. Yeah, uh, whereas I have also decided to trade Charlotte, but instead of uh, Alexa Bliss, I am trading her for Becky Lynch. Mm-hmm. I think that putting Becky Lynch over there and have, throwing her into the mix with uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks and Emma, I think that'd be really great. Yeah, because that that division needs some freshening up. And, you know, well, I think we both want to get Charlotte away from Sasha Banks. Well, yeah, yeah, more, and uh, Bailey, more yeah. yeah, more or less anything else. But like that, I think that'd be a really great way to kind of freshen that place up a little bit. And I think that'd be a really good move for her. She's got red hair, so why not? Oh, have it's it, yeah, it's on brand. It's on brand. It's on brand. And then you move Charlotte over for the same reasons that you've said there. I think she'd be a really great fit within the the SmackDown Women's Division, which at the moment is ostensibly stronger. Yeah, and is and is putting on more. Uh, well, it's, the, it's putting on better TVs. It wasn't well represented at, at, at WrestleMania. Well, you, you got the co-main event. Yeah, it was put in the death spot. What are you talking about? It was put in the death spot. Uh, so the final one, I've saved my biggest one till last. Now, this isn't this isn't something that I necessarily want. It's something that I think is going to happen. And from what I understand about the direction the company's taking storyline-wise, I feel like it's something that has to happen. And that's Roman Reigns for AJ Styles. No. I'm sorry, guys. I know. I'm sorry, but that's what I think is going to happen because it's, it's they've been reported for months, uh, but they could equally change their mind last minute. Yeah, I don't want to see AJ leave SmackDown. I really don't. And I'd, I'd quite happily have Roman Reigns over at SmackDown, but I don't want to. Li- I don't want to lose AJ, especially now Nakamura's there. Why don't you want to lose AJ? I think that AJ is presented better opportunities on SmackDown and can get into better feuds than he can on Raw when he'll be playing. And I suppose I mean if Roman's staying there, he would just be playing second fiddle to Roman Reigns. But if Roman moves to SmackDown, Roman, yeah, but I mean, yeah, because AJ would be a babyface in this scenario. Yeah, I don't know. I just think they've got a nice thing going on SmackDown. Maybe I just yeah. I, maybe I just hate change. He's the face that runs the. He's the face that built the place. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So he's got that nice story. Yeah, I know. What and about was, you? Uh, so in fact, I'm. I did not save my best for last because <laughs> I, I did. I didn't realize we were doing it in you know in this sort of order. I probably should have mentioned this one yeah. much earlier. But instead, I've gone for uh, swapping Callisto for Bo Dallas, and this was a real struggle for me. I think a, it's a really good move. A, because I couldn't think of anyone else that I think should move over at this point uh, that's not involved in a feud or any uh, a, a championship or anything like that. And I had to proper scour both rosters to try and find people. Yeah, I had the like, Wikipedia yeah, page Yeah, the up. Wikipedia page open. An excellent Wikipedia page, whoever put that yeah, together. Nice well, well, it would work. Well, it, was the, it was the community of the internet who worked <laughs> on that one. Uh, but Kalisto, you move him over to Raw, he is then within the... Um, the cruiserweight division, yes, and that's gra- that's the real key there, and that's a great place for him because he's doing he, like Apollo Cruz. He's doing nout on SmackDown. He can join his buddy Apollo Cruz in the cruiserweight <laughs> division, which he's not going to do. Um, and then you move Bo Dallas across again because you, it's someone you could rebuild and possibly put within the Wyatt family. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I like. So, what are your trades? This is going up on Saturday, so we've got at least two, two days. days. Before the superstar shakeup on Raw, Christ, I can't wait to not say Hashtag that ever again. Super, uh, I will be. It'll be in the corner, won't it? Of course, it will. That's why I said, man, it's branding. I don't like. Oh, that's another conversation for another time. <laughs> Roh have started doing it as well. They have the you know like skull versus coal. I don't. I don't want that hashtag there. Wait, wouldn't it work out better if you just had hashtag Roh? It's a shorter hashtag. I don't know how it's, metrics it's, work. It's getting more trends though. 
because if your top if the top trends are like WrestleMania, Roman versus Undertaker, Triple Threat tag match, or oh, all this, all of a sudden like re- like there's like not only are we the top trending thing worldwide, we're also the top ten trending things worldwide. Do you know this? I think this illustrates the difference between me and wrestling promoters. I would rather have one thing <laughs> really, 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 really good, the best, and they would have lots of things doing okay yeah but all up there yeah okay well that's all we've got time for for this recent run of the wrestle talk show if you liked it like you did the well, i hope you liked the the previous wrestle talk prediction ones we'll come back next week yeah won't we that'd, that'd, be, be, nice. Be, yeah, that'd be nice i hope we don't get just a, a load of horrible barrage <laughs> of abuse now that the wrestle more the wrestle Mania, the WrestleMania honeymoon is over. I was like, no, I don't like wrestling anymore. The cynical, uh, yeah. the cynical crowd can come back in and hate on us once again. Cool. But for now, please do leave a comment and su- uh, suggest other names for Superstar Shakeup, other names for this show, and if there's any segments you'd like us to maybe adopt in the in the next batch of TV tapings. <laughs> Wow, we're doing TV tapings. Oh, no. We're like Impact. Oh, it's gonna it's all gonna leak online. If, if we're Impact, though, we'd be taping like fifteen of these. Yeah, and you'll get injured. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be so no, long no, that no. you'll get injured, and you can come back by the time the next tapings happen. <laughs> we'd, we'd be taping them so long that I would leave Wrestle Talk. Yeah, I, I, I would leave Wrestle Talk during their airing dates because and, their and contracts so, and, uh, and go and sign with What Culture instead. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> Love you, what culture? <laughs> and Plumpy, have you seen that? No. Okay, so the two Adams, you know, they've got mm. their uh, their predictions war. Uh, the, this was built up as the last one ever, and the thing that was on the line. I don't know if they're actually going to do it, but the loser would change their name by deed poll, so legally, to Plumpy. Wow. Which is pretty extreme. Yeah. And uh, Adam Blompier lost, so he's now called Plumpy. Hmm. I mean, that's pretty severe. That's pretty severe. I wouldn't change my name to Plumpy. Like that feels like I wouldn't put that on the line. I'm just that. I just it feels I'm, like it's it's a very pa- all powered to him for for being that yeah, brave. Yeah, it's it's a jackass, uh, like Dirty Sanchez, mm. uh, almost impractical Joker's style uh, angle. But I would I would prefer to have a sort of physical pain thing, like a yeah. jackass, where maybe I'll get a I don't know what's a, a horrible thing you could do to me. Uh, put a nail through your hand. <laughs> that's a good it's okay that's an interesting one would you rather have a nail oh. through your hand or your name changed to plump legally yeah so it's on your passport and your driver's license I guess I don't mind that it's uh, if you if you then forced me to do all my email addresses and all the accounts I'd just be like oh that's too much hassle hammer it in <laughs> what about you yeah I don't know Nail in oh, the handle. Well, no, that, I mean, I'm getting married in October, so I can't change my name anyway because like, I've. No, I've, no, you're, I've, you'll be Plumpy Owen. No, I know, but I've already signed legal documents to say that Luke Owen is getting married, so I can't then get. I can't change. Can you not my just name. change that. No, no, I'd have to go through the meetings again, and I'd rather not. Well, do no, that. you have to go through the meetings again. <laughs> no, I'd rather not do that. <laughs> not only that, I've got, I'm getting married in October. I don't want the the, the people, to, the registrar, to be turning around saying like, "Do you, do you Plumpy, do sure. you lady partner take Plumpy?" <laughs> Your lovely wedding it's husband. A very funny word. It's a nice <laughs> word to say. Uh, we we've gone way off topic. God, we we contain the rambling <laughs> for three different episodes. This is the last bit of the taping, and yeah. now we're going off on a tangent. It, it is the main event. Yeah. So yeah, do subscribe. <laughs>